Hi everyone, in this video I will explain continuous interest rates or what is known as the force of interest. More specifically I'll be looking at a constant force of interest. In a later video we will cover the force of interest as a function of time. So, so far we have seen how interest payments can be made at discrete time points. For example, at the end of a period I, the effective interest is paid and at the beginning of the period D, the discount rate is paid. If we take our time period and then split it up into P intervals, we can then show how our effective rates for those smaller periods are paid. Now with a continuously compound interest rate or with a force of interest, we have interest that is paid every moment of our time period. So to explore this, we start off with a nominal rate compounded Peathly. And what we really want to do is we want to take our time period and break it up into tiny pieces. So to express this mathematically, we will take the limit as P tends to infinity. And what this does is it makes our time, it breaks our time period into very small pieces. And this is what, essentially what our force of interest is. And we denote it using the grid letter delta. Now, if we have to plug in values for P into IP, and get progressively bigger, we will see that our value for IP starts to converge to our delta. Here we have an effective interest rate of 5% and we've previously shown that if our P is greater than 0, that our IP will always be less than I. In other words, our nominal rate will always be less than our effective rate. And that is also what we're seeing in this chart. So our force of interest is essentially our continuously compounded interest rate that is compounded every moment. And this acts as a force of interest. And remember, we donate this with the Greek letter delta or lowercase Greek letter delta. Now, in this video, we're only going to focus on the constant force of interest that doesn't change over time. So to derive the force of interest in terms of something that we know, like our effective interest rate, we start off with this formula that shows our nominal interest rate in terms of our effective interest rate. We then want to take the limit as P tends to infinity of both sides. And what we'll see is that since there is no P on our left hand side, we can really just scratch that out. Now at this point, we want to make use of Euler's rule, which is as follows. We then also want to make use of the fact that we've previously seen the limit of IP as P tends to infinity is equal to our force of interest. By applying these rules, we get to this point. And if we take natural logs of each side, we can express our delta or our force of interest in terms of an effective interest rate. And now we have a relationship for our force of interest in terms of an interest rate that we know. Now it's important to note that our effective interest rate here is per annum, which means our force of interest would also then be per annum or annualized. Now what's important for us is to be able to calculate the present value and future value of cash flows. And to do this, we need an accumulation factor and a discount factor, as we've seen in previous videos. So to calculate our accumulation factor using a force of interest, we simply start off with what we already know. And to come up with an accumulation factor over the period zero to n, we simply raise each side to the power n, giving us our accumulation factor. Now, since the interest rate that we're using here i is an effective rate per annum, our force of interest also applies per annum, which means it covers from time zero to time n. And this is essentially how we will find the future value of cash flows. In order to find the discount factor, we start off with what we already know. In other words, that our discount factor is the inverse of our accumulation factor. Similarly, for our V that we're used to using as our discount factor, we can easily show that as well. Now, we understand how our interest rates relate to our force of interest, but what about our discount rate? Now we use this important relationship which shows our nominal discount rate in terms of our effective interest rate. 
And what we're also going to do here is we want to see what happens to DP as P gets larger and larger. So we do just that. We set up our equation and we take the limits of both sides. We then rely on the limit rule as follows. And again, we rely on Euler's rule as follows. By using these rules in our calculations, we can see that our force of interest is equal to our discount rate taken to the limit. And if we chart DP for an increasing P, we can see that our discount rate converges again to the force of interest, this time from below. By showing a chart of both our IP and our DP, we can see how they both converge to the force of interest. So this is telling us that as we split up our time period into ever increasing smaller periods, that our interest rate converges to what is known as our force of interest. The previous chart helps us to show this relationship where we can arrange all our rates from smallest to biggest and we can see the relative differences in size. This is very useful for us when we are doing a sense check on our calculations in tests or exams. So the key takeaway is that the force of interest is really a theoretical measure and we don't really use it in practice. However, it's very useful to approximate interest that's paid over very frequent periods like daily. In this video, we focused on the constant force of interest and we showed this relationship. E to the delta equals to one plus I is probably gonna be the most useful way to remember this because it easily translates to an accumulation factor or discount factor. Similarly, we have our new accumulation factors and discount factors, and we will, we will see that these relationships in terms of interest rates V and D still hold in the case where we have a constant force of interest. We still calculate our present values and future values in the same way, but be sure to remember that these only apply when we're using a constant force of interest. Always remember to use effective rates when discounting or accumulating and to store values in your calculator. This golden formula that we've seen in previous videos is now extended to include the force of interest and is worthwhile remembering for your tests and exams. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please share it and please subscribe to the channel.